your girl Bengali So Jolly back on the scene once again. Guys, you know I love fun, and what's funner than an amusement park? So it shouldn't shock you that Orlando, Florida, the amusement park capital, is one of my favorite places to travel. I have been visiting Orlando since I was a kid, and now I think it's time to give you some of my top suggestions for your next family vacation. But first, let's jump into some history, shall we? Okay, to understand the history of Orlando, we have to start at the beginning. Orlando was originally a swampland inhabited by the Seminole Indians who migrated in the 1700s. The land was not desirable, initially because of the humidity and the mosquitoes, but the Seminoles put their roots down there anyway. Unsurprisingly, the colonizers showed up and did what they did best, colonize. They actually hated everything about Florida, calling it loathsome and God abandoned, but took up residency there because of its relationship to Cuba, Mexico, and Central and South America. You see, they regularly shipped gold and silver to those countries, and you already know what happened next. They started killing the people that already lived there, which caused a series of wars called the Seminole Wars. A fort was built to protect the settlements of colonies from attacks. Those settlements would later become Orlando. Now, let's talk amusement parks. Orlando sat around for years with very little business development or interest, but one man was about to change that, and his name was Walt Disney. Disney had already established a park in Anaheim, California called Disneyland back in the 1950s. Although he was experiencing success with that park, he noticed that he wasn't getting many visitors from the East Coast. This is what led him to Orlando, a land he spotted on a plane as he was flying over. Orlando was still swampy, but Disney liked the lack of development as well as its location between the two major highways. He started construction in the 1960s. Unfortunately, Disney died before the doors opened in 1971. Disney World began attracting millions of visitors, so it was no surprise that SeaWorld came to capitalize on Orlando's success too, opening its Orlando location two years later in 1973. Lastly came Universal Studios, the most ambitious of the parks, which opened in 1990. All right, now that history time is over, let's jump right into those suggestions. Number one, tap into that timeshare. If you grew up in a black middle class home in the 90s, then nine times out of 10, your grandmother or mom purchased a timeshare. Use it. For the most part, I hate everything about timeshares, but in Orlando, it allows me to live like the queen I am. My favorite property is the Marriott Grand Vista. It has so many amenities for such a low price. I'm talking pools, restaurants, arcades, paddle boats, and 11 person suites all for around 300 bucks. This is not a PSA to purchase a timeshare, but if your family already owns it, definitely tap in. Number two, cheap tickets. Now, I'm a frugal vacationer, so I try to get the biggest bang for my buck. Park tickets can cost hundreds, and while I haven't found a way to get it cheaper than that, I can show you how to shave off a few bucks. Firstly, check the website. I know you're probably thinking that the park websites are going to hit you over the head, but that's not true. Parks can offer their own discounts, especially around the holidays. I caught a Black Friday sale for SeaWorld that brought the price down by 60%, which is amazing. If the website isn't having a sale, check the site Undercover Tourist, which you can find a link to in my description. This is my favorite website to get tickets. They offer discounts for off-season, which is great because Orlando's weather is pretty decent year-round. Also, most parks have a special if you go after 1 p.m., but keep in mind the lines are probably going to be super long. Also, if you do use your timeshare and feel like sitting through a presentation, you can earn a gift card to use towards your tickets. I sat through a horrible four-hour presentation and used the money to upgrade my Universal tickets to park hoppers. I really wanted to ride the Hogwarts Express, so it was totally worth it. Harry Potter, you done, done it again, boy. You done, done it again, boy. Number three, be prepared. It's Florida. It rains. It's a rainy day here to see today. But we're not gonna let that stop us. No way. Okay? Because we came all the way here. We spent good money. A little rain ain't gonna stop nobody. Stop by Walmart and pick up a poncho for your whole family. If you purchase them in advance, they will only be a couple bucks. But if you wait until it rains in the park, you'll be paying upwards of $15 or more for the same cheap plastic. It's also worth it to tuck an umbrella into your backpack in case the rain gets heavy. You can rent a stroller and wheelchairs inside the park for around $20, but the real crack is the scooter. 
A scooter can range around $60 or more, but it's worth it for your loved one to be able to explore the park alone and you can store your loose items in the back of it. Just make sure you ask the people to move the chains on the ride so they can roll right in because nothing was more hilarious or embarrassing than watching my grandmother crash into the metal barricades as she tried to navigate the zigzags. Number 4. Use the apps. Download the apps on your phone and sync your tickets. This allows you to go paperless and the apps have lots of cool features. Most of them have park maps and ride waiting times which can save you on a crowded day. You can also add your car in advance so you can purchase food ahead of time and just pick it up. The coolest feature that most of the park apps offer is ride scheduling. General admission Disney tickets can schedule three fast pass rides in advance. I used mine for Space Mountain, which was amazing. You can also make reservations to restaurants, so check it out. All right, so my fifth and final tip is budget fun. That's my favorite word, budget. Orlando has so many attractions that are less costly than the parks. They have cool alligator conservatories and lots of mini golf. Sometimes you can't afford to go to every park, but that doesn't mean you just sit around bored. Disney Springs and City Walk are both great places to have a drink and see some live entertainment. Disney Springs has a lot of great shopping and a cool dining movie theater where we saw The Lion King. Also, if you want souvenirs, save your money in the park and go to one of the many discount stores around your hotel. Every store from 7-Eleven to Walmart offers Disney merch, so rack up on it before your park visit. Okay guys, so that's going to wrap up this episode of Nacho Typical News. For more information about this video, please visit the links below in my description. And I'm going to catch you guys back here next time for some great food, some great fun, and some what? That's right guys, some even greater history. I'm going to see you next time. Bye!